A biker was airlifted Sunday after crashing near the Richmond Scotland line. According to the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, the man was traveling back to Guilford County with a group coming from Myrtle Beach on US 74. Troopers say other bikers in the group noticed the man moving to the right and thought he was just moving from the center. The man ran off the road and was thrown off his motorcycle, hitting the handlebars and breaking the windshield, according to troopers. He was airlifted to UNC Hospital in Chapel Hill with severe injuries to his face. Troopers say the man could have had a contributing health condition such as dehydration or heat exhaustion. Another man was airlifted Monday night after flipping his vehicle several times near the Richmond Moore Montgomery County lines. The LAB Rescue Squad responded to the single vehicle wreck around 8.41 p.m. According to Trooper E. Johnson with the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, the man was traveling south toward his residence from Foxfire on Cedar Lane Road when he ran off the road to the right. The vehicle hit the ditch and overturned multiple times, including once after the driver was ejected from not wearing a seatbelt, the trooper said. He added that alcohol was a factor. The man suffered a broken leg and severe head and neck trauma, and he was also airlifted to UNC Hospital in Chapel Hill. The driver's name has not yet been released. The 11 runners in the annual Special Olympics torch run had a surprise participant join them about a mile into the trek. Deputies from the Richmond County Sheriff's Office and probation and parole officers from the North Carolina Department of Public Safety Community Corrections started the journey at the Richmond County Animal Shelter with Zach Allen leading the way carrying the torch. When they ran by the Alco gas station on US 74 business, a small black and white dog ran out to tag along. The pup kept pace as the runners continued past the ruins of Great Falls Mill up US 1 to Steel Street ending at the Hitchcock Creek Greenway. The dog and some of the runners stopped at the picnic tables while Deputy John Edwards and a few others ran the park's trail. For Edwards and those who ran the trail, the trip was about 5.5 miles. Chief Deputy Mark Gulledge joined them for lunch with a message from Sheriff James Clemens, who was out of town, saying that he appreciated their continued support for Richmond County Special Olympics. Special Olympics coordinator Teresa Smith also joined them at the park. The overcast skies and cool breeze were a relief from years past. As for the dog, Edwards said she seemed to be doing a lot better than they were. Animal control was called to come pick up the dog, but couldn't because the shelter is full, so they plan to take her back to where she joined them. A visit to the North Carolina Zoo now includes an option to virtually go on safari in Africa. A new virtual reality theater features 10 seats where guests put on VR headsets for a five-minute virtual tour through the diverse plains of Africa. Guests get nose-to-nose uh, -nose with some of the continent's most iconic animals like elephants, rhinos, and giraffes. This new experience is designed to provide a dynamic and unique way to connect the zoo's guests to nature using the latest in technology. This new attraction is now open and is located in Junction Plaza. The VR experience is a $3 additional fee per person or guests may use a fun ticket for entry. Hours are 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. daily through October 31st. For more information, visit nczoo.com attractions. A statewide click it or ticket campaign to raise awareness of the dangers of being an unbelted occupant in a vehicle got underway at the North Carolina State Highway Patrol training track in Raleigh. The stage crash involved two Dodge Chargers on a pulley system headed towards each other at about 45 miles per hour. The impact caused the two vehicles to be totaled. The stage crash vividly highlights the dangers of being an unbelted rider in any seat. In conjunction with the click it or ticket staged crash, law enforcement agencies around the state are conducting checkpoints at city, county, and state borders in a border-to-border -border full saturation campaign that will last until nightfall. In its application to build a solar facility on Governor Roy Cooper's Nash County property, Durham-based Strata Solar said its generating capacity would be about 5 megawatts, enough energy to power continuously about 3,750 homes. But the plant won't generate 5 megawatts of energy 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Much of the time, it won't produce anything. 
The application notes that solar is an intermittent energy source and therefore the maximum dependable capacity is zero megawatts. Cooper's application isn't unusual though. Engineers who've worked with electric utilities say solar facilities generate no power most of the day and seldom reach peak generation, yet they are marketed by how many megawatts of electricity they can produce during the rare times they're at maximum output. Electric utilities such as Duke Energy and Dominion Energy must keep redundant fossil fuel fired electric sources operating constantly to fill in immediately when solar power is disrupted by clouds, rain and nightfall. Making matters costlier, the Federal Public Utility, Utility Regulatory Policies Act requires utilities to buy all commercial solar power generated, even if it's more expensive than energy from other sources, such as nuclear, natural gas, or hydropower. All right, and we return. We've got you a Live at Five weather report. The temperatures are rising. Will we hit triple digits? We'll let you know right after the break, so stay tuned. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. We are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete seven curricular programs entirely online, including our university transfer degree. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. Blow Tree Antiques and Gifts is an occasional shop located at 122 South Hancock Street in Rockingham. We are open the first weekend of each month, Thursday through Saturday. We strive to offer a unique selection of vintage, antique, handmade, and new goods. If you are looking for something out of the ordinary, then we're the place for you. Blow Tree Antiques and Gifts is passionate about helping you make your home or office space unique. We would love to see you during our next occasional shop dates. Today's Live 5 weather report is brought to you by Medical Center Pharmacy. And there's so many clouds out today that you can almost not see the sky at all. It's just clouds everywhere. Uh, the sun is still out. You just can't see it as well as you did yesterday when the, there was no clouds. And of course, tomorrow uh, it's going to be pretty sunny as well with a few clouds here and there. So going into tomorrow's temperatures, uh, it's going to be close to the 90s. And Wadesboro area will actually have some showers here and there. We may experience some of that. We'll know later on uh, tomorrow whether that's true or not. Uh, but of course, starting with Fayetteville, hit a high of 89, low 71. Larnberg, 89, 70, just like Rayford. And then going into Larnberg, we have 89, 69, just like Bennettsville. And then closer to us, starting with Southern Pines, 88, 71. Ellery, 86, 69, just like Rockingham with 87, 69. And Wadesboro, who will be experiencing some showers here and there with 8770. So we may experience some in Rockingham as well, considering how close we are to Wadesboro, but we'll know later on to, in the day tomorrow whether that's true or not, like I already said. But of course, going to the seven day forecast, like I said, for tomorrow, 8769, and that's pretty much the last day that's gonna be in the 80s for a while, because as you can tell, we have a lot of 90 something days going on. So starting with Fridays, uh, from Friday to Tuesday, it's gonna be very sunny, almost no clouds going on those days. So Friday, 94, 71. Saturday, 92, 72. Uh, Sunday, 95, 69. And then Monday, 96, 72. And that's the start of next week. So next week is going to start out really, really hot. But of course, Tuesday, 95, 72. And then Wednesday, we'll have some clouds here and there with the 97, 74. So with all this hot weather coming up, be sure to stay hydrated, stay safe, because it is going to be dangerously hot. It's getting really close to that point where it's getting so close to the hundreds that it's going to be blistering hot. So make sure you stay safe. But of course, that's it for your Live 5 weather report. After this, we have more news coming up, so stay tuned. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. 
At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at the Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office has confirmed an early morning fire late last week is being investigated as a possible arson. Detective Major Jay Childers said Monday that the Sheriff's Office has received assistance from the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation as well as a canine from the Union County Fire Marshal's Office. The East Rockingham Fire Department responded to a blaze on Marigold Street just after 3.30 a.m. Friday where crews found two vehicles, a Chevy Suburban and a Nissan Altima, on fire, according to Assistant Chief Bill Bayless. The fire also burned the wooden carport the vehicles were under, as well as one room on the residence, which was a 24 by 60 mobile home on a concrete foundation. Contrary to posts on social media, Childers said the vehicles were not shot. The Richmond Observer will have more information as it becomes available. <clears throat> A move to ease restrictions for North Carolina craft brewers who want to distribute their own beer is on the verge of becoming law. On May 20th, the North Carolina Senate, in a 38-3 vote, passed the Craft Beer Distribution and Modernization Act, the result of a compromise among mid-sized craft brewers and the North Carolina Beer and Wine Wholesalers Association. The measure passed the North Carolina House in April by a 104-8 vote. It now goes to the governor. House Bill 363 maintains the current three-tier system, pro producers, wholesalers, and retailers, and adds a new mid-level classification of brewers to state law. Brewers under the proposal could self-distribute 50,000 barrels of their products as opposed to the current 25,000. The legislation also gives growing brewers more flexibility in choosing where and how to distribute their beers around the state. Lawmakers, distributors, and brewers have publicly cheered the bill's progress, but the bill's path has been anything but clear, as lobbying efforts and legal battles have served to sidetrack similar measures for the better part of a decade. In a joint statement Monday, Tim Kent, Executive Director of the North Carolina Beer and Wine Wholesalers Association, and Susie Ford, a founder of Noda Brewing Company in Charlotte, say HB 363 is a collective win for all parties involved. Summer is peak rabies season, and state veterinarian Doug Meckes is encouraging North Carolina livestock owners to consider having their animals vaccinated against the disease. Rabies is transmitted primarily in saliva through a bite. Livestock infected with rabies usually appear depressed, difficulty eating, drinking, or swallowing, profuse salivation, blindness, head pressing, and circling. Constant yawning, itching, or nibbling may also be signs of rabies. Rabies can be associated with neurological problems such as incoordination, decreased muscle tone and reflexes, or partial to complete paralysis. Horse owners should be aware that rabies can often mimic symptoms of colic in horses. The incubation for rabies is between two weeks and six months. Once symptoms appear, the disease is almost always fatal. Livestock owners should discuss with their veterinarians about the risk of rabies in their area and preventative vaccinations. And that's going to do it for another edition of Live at Five. Be sure to stay up to date on all the latest in Richmond County by going to richmondobserver.com or by downloading the free RO app for your mobile devices. And be sure to tune in to Good Morning Sand Hills Monday through Friday during their new time from 7 to 8 a.m. For the Live at Five crew, I'm Matt Harrelson. Thanks for watching and have a good night, Richmond County.